Hello bookworms! Today I'm gonna be doing my June book haul for you. Way more books than I should have gotten considering I just went to book expo. And I also know that I've been posting quite a bit of book hauls and wrap ups on my channel lately and that's because I was trying to catch up from April but I'm now officially caught up so here is June and then we'll have new kinds of videos in July and it will be very exciting. In addition to the books that I'm gonna show you I also have two novel boxes which I'm really excited about. One of them is the novel box that we were able to curate at Book Expo and the other one is the novel box for July. The novel reached out to me and asked if I wanted to get a box and to unbox it on my channel and I said yes because it sounded like it was going to be a great box so yeah excited to open both of those. As always, gonna start first with the new releases. First, I have a Stranger Things book, which is called Runaway Max, and this is a young adult novel following Max from Stranger Things. She was the newest character to, one of the newest characters rather, to be added to the last season, and I really took a liking to her, so I'm very much looking forward to reading her book. She has quite a difficult home life, just judging by her brother and her parents, and I think it's gonna be really interesting to get to see a little bit more into her mind. So next, I actually have the Owl Crete exclusive edition of Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I have been talking about this book quite a bit on my channel recently because I love it so much and I just want everyone to read it, and as soon as I realized that it was the Owl Crate book of the month, I ordered an Owl Crate for myself, and yeah, I'm very, very pleased with that decision. I mentioned in my last book haul that I'm no longer we're going to be doing the Owl Crate unboxings because it just got to be a lot for me to have to do every month, but I obviously still do love Owl Crate. I mean, I just bought a box on my own because I needed this. <laughs> and I'm really glad that I did because I think the purple is such a beautiful cover. And actually that whole box was pretty great. Then I went to the book launch for Wicked Fox at Books of Wonder. This is by Kat Cho and I'm so excited to read this one. I'm actually planning on reading it this week because it is Caritathon. It's the group book so it's the one for everyone to read. That's being hosted by Monica from She Might Be Monica. I've been wanting to read this one so much so I'm really excited that now I have a whole bunch of people reading it at the same time. But it follows a girl who is a gomihu and she needs to devour the souls of men in order to survive but she meets this human boy and goes completely against her nature by saving him and then she's going to eventually have to choose between her immortality and her new friendship and I'm, I'm just so excited and it's supposedly heavily inspired by k-dramas and it just sounds like it's gonna be fantastic. I also got Soul of the Sword by Julie Kagawa. This is the second book after Shadow of the Fox which I have pretty prominently displayed back here because I loved it so much. And I've actually already started reading this one and I'm really enjoying this one so far as well. Can't wait to finish it and there's already a title for the third book and I love it. The series is like basically an anime but it's a fantasy series and it takes place in Japan and it's kind of like a quest like traveling type novel and I just love everything about it. I love the characters, I love the setting, I love all of the like Japanese folklore that went into it. It's awesome. And then I'm super excited because I actually won like my first giveaway ever. So Margaret Owen, who is the author of The Merciful Crow, had a giveaway because she illustrated some of the characters that are in the book in a couple copies of ARCs and there were, I want to say like six-ish people that won an arc that had one of her original illustrations in it and I happen to be one of those lucky people which like literally never happens. So yeah, I I'm so excited. It just came in the mail like yesterday and she tied it with a little tooth, which is so cool. And I'm like, I don't want to open it because it looks so nice, but also I really want to open it. <laughs> it's an even prettier tissue paper. I love these feathers. I'm so excited. This is this was one of the books that I talked about in my most anticipated fantasy books for 2019 video because I cannot wait to read this one. Also, I'm just obsessed with this cover for the main event. Oh gosh, I'm so excited. Oh, so she actually signed it and personalized it to me too. It says, to Kristen, ask for teeth. And then it says, that's me next to Margaret Owen, which is pretty funny and it has her signature. Oh my gosh, there's a very super cute cat. That's amazing. I love it. He's a little orange cat. Just look at how beautiful that is. I'm so excited. And I love all of the teeth that are surrounding her. Wow. I honestly just feel so lucky to have gotten this because like I said, I've never won any giveaways like that on Twitter before. This was just such a surprise and it's so beautiful. And like, it's so special too because it's the author interpreting her own character and it's such a detailed sketch. Ooh, 
Thank you, Margaret. I'm so excited. I can't wait to read this. Then I have Hungry Hearts, which is an anthology, and it is all about Asian cooking. And I'm really excited because Asian food is like my favorite food in the world. And I think stories based on food are gonna be something that really appeals to me. There are a whole bunch of authors that wrote stories in here, some of them being SK Ali, Adiel Said, Rincha Pecco, Sentaya Manon, Anna Marie McLemore, Rebecca Roanhorse, like quite a few, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Then I have a finished copy of Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I unfortunately was sick and I was unable to attend the launch event for the book, but my friend Rachel was kind enough to pick me up a copy while she was there, so I have a signed copy, which I'm so, so, so thankful for because I love this book so much. It's one of my favorites of the year. Everyone should read it. It's amazing. Then I have a copy of Virtually Yours by Sarvanas Tosh. This is a book that I also went to the launch event for. It was also a lot of fun. They did a lot of unconventional things at this launch, which I really enjoyed. They had kind of like a dating game to see who would match the most answers with the author, which I thought was super cute. But this book follows a girl who joins up for a VR dating app. You only get matched with three people. So she gets matched with her ex-boyfriend, her current best friend, and someone that she doesn't really know. And she ends up kind of catfishing her ex-boyfriend. And it just sounds like it's going to be really entertaining. Sarvana's definitely made it sound super interesting. And I really loved her other book, The Geek's Guide to Unrequited Love. So I'm quite excited to read what she's done next. Then I have The Rest of the Story by Sarah Dust. This is Sarah Dustin's new book and it is a signed first edition. This one I actually picked up at a book signing as well at Books of Wonder. I'm curious about this one. It sounds like it's going to be cute. Then I have the most beautiful edition of Anne of Green Gables. This is a new edition that just got released. It's the first time ever that Anne of Green Gables has been published on Prince Edward Island, which is where the story takes place. And not only that, but this is a like direct replica of the first edition of Anne of Green Gables that was ever published. So it definitely holds a very special place in my heart. I'm really excited to have this one in my possession. Shipping from Canada was a little bit expensive, but it was totally worth it because Anne of Green Gables just is one of my favorite classics ever. Then I have The Lovely War by Julie Berry. This is a young adult historical novel. I actually have not read too many young adult historical novels, but I've been really enjoying adult historical fiction lately. So I'm really excited to read this one. It looks like it's going to be a little bit on the longer side, but I've heard really good things about it. My friend Alexa read it already and she loved it. And she was like, you need to get this immediately. And obviously I trust her opinion. So hence why I have this copy right here. And the spine is pink. I love it. Then I have The Lovely and the Lost by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I have no idea what this book is about. I'm going to be totally honest. I didn't realize that Jennifer Lynn Barnes was coming out with a new book, but as soon as I saw her name on the cover, I was like, yes, because I love everything that she's written that I've read so far. So there was no question that I was getting this. I didn't need to know what it was about. She's kind of an auto by author for me at this point. Then another book event that I went to was for The Beholder by Anna Bright. I have not yet read this one yet, but I'm really excited to do so. It was pitched as like a Cinderella meets the Odyssey kind of story, which sounds really interesting, but I watched a really good review of it on Kara from Wild Book Gardens channel. She got me really excited to read it. And also just hearing Anna talk got me really excited too. She seems like one of the nicest people ever, so I really want to enjoy her book. Then I have a copy of The Darkest Star by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is another event book. I went to the Jennifer L. Armentrout event at Books of Wonder with my friend Rachel, and I've been listening to the Lux series on audio, and I've been really enjoying it. So I was planning on buying those with the new covers, even though I don't super love them, but they're still better than the bind up covers, but they didn't have any copies of those in stock. So I ended up getting The Darkest Star, which revisits the Lux series years later. So once I finish those, then I'll be able to dive into this one. And I obviously haven't read the synopsis because I don't want to be spoiled on that series. I also picked up Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie, which is again, another event book. She was there alongside Jennifer L. Armentrout. Just hearing her speak got me really excited for her book. And she was talking about how much she loves anime and how spiritual Spirited Away was a big inspiration while she was writing this, and that there's a character that is kind of an homage to Spirited Away. I needed it. I'm shocked that I haven't actually read this one yet, but I'm excited to have a personalized copy and to read this one. Then I got a couple of really exciting arcs in the mail, the first one being Loki by Mackenzie Lee. I tried to get this one at Book Expo, but the line was just too crazy, and I really didn't want any part of that because security was getting involved, and I am just not going to do that since the book's going to come out eventually. So when this showed up on my doorstep, I was 
I, I like literally gasped. Andrew was like, what? And I was like, it's the Loki book. Cannot wait to read this one. This one comes out in September. I also got The Lady Rogue by Jen Bennett. This is Jen Bennett's newest book, which is coming out in the fall. And it's actually a departure from the cute contemporaries that I'm used to reading by her. This is a historical fantasy novel and it has an expedition to Romania and there's ties to Vlad the Impaler. And it sounds like it's gonna be really cool. Then I've got a couple of romance books to share. The first one being The Chase by Elle Kennedy. This is the first book in her Briar you series. So this is just a new set of stories that take place in the same setting as that first series and I'm excited. I still have to finish reading off campus and then I will dive into these next. Then I have The Cactus by Sarah Haywood and this is the Reese Witherspoon book club pick of June. It looks like an adorable rom-com and quite honestly I was just drawn to this cover because pink and mint are like two of my favorite colors and it's so honeydukes. I believe it's like an office rom-com. Just sounds like it's gonna be really good. Then I have New Orleans Rush by Kelly Siskind. This one takes place in New Orleans which I think will be interesting because I just finished reading The Beautiful which also took place in New Orleans but it was New Orleans in the 1800s whereas this is present day New Orleans. And this one follows a girl who follows her boyfriend friend to New Orleans and then finds him cheating on her with another woman. So she ends up becoming a magician's assistant and I believe she's gonna fall for the magician. Then I have Passion on Park Avenue by Lauren Lane. This is a new series. This is the first book in the series. It's called the Central Park Pact series. This one I was kind of drawn to because number one, the cover, obviously. Secondly, the cover reminds me of Devil Wears Prada. And third of all, it takes place in New York City. So yeah. I'm interested. And speaking of New York City, I also have Park Avenue Summer, which is a historical fiction novel. This is actually on my TBR for July. I'm really hoping to get to it. It's by Renee Rawson and it follows a girl who moves from the Midwest to New York City and she ends up working for the first female editor-in-chief of Cosmopolitan magazine. Then another book that was on my TBR is Nuts by Alice Clayton. This one takes place in the Hudson Valley in New York State and it follows a girl who was a chef in LA and then she has like a mishap and she ends up moving back home and working at her family Emily's diner and she meets a farmer who's very into the slow food movement. Then I have The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Abby Waxman and this one is actually an arc and this was lent to me by Alexa from Alexa Loves Books so thank you very much Alexa for giving me this one. From what I've heard this is a really cute story about a very bookish main character but she is an extrovert, which is a little bit different because we usually see introverts as bookish characters. Nina's the only child of a single mother and when the father that she never knew passes away, she finds out that she actually has a whole lot of relatives that live really close by to her and I believe it's about her getting to know them. Then I have the next volume of the Eternal Editions of Sailor Moon. This is volume five and I'm living for those color illustrations. Then I have two really pretty classics to show you. The first one being another copy of Anne of Green Gables. This is by Articus Books and I purchased my copy on Book Depository. So it's actually a slipcased book. So this is the slipcase. And if you take it out, you have this beautiful hardcover. And the other one is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. And this is also another super beautiful slipcased edition. So we have this here. And then if you take it out, got another gorgeous, gorgeous classic. I'm really excited to have both of these in my collection. Peter Pan and Anne of Green Gables are like my two favorite classic books ever. So it's so nice that this new edition of both of them came out at the same time. Now I'm gonna show you the novel boxes that I got. So the first one says Super Space Chick Novel Box because it was curated by yours truly when I was at the brunch that we had at Book Expo. So first we have The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. This was one of my most anticipated books for the second half of the year. I'm so excited to read this one. It's pretty much like a zombie kind of story, but it is all tied to like fae folklore. And it follows a girl who is a grave digger, which is kind of giving me some eye zombie vibes. I Zombie the comic, not I Zombie the television show. And it says that this is equal parts horror novel and fairy tale, and both of those are very much up my alley. And this one's coming out in September. Then I have Internment by Samira Ahmed. This is one that I have not yet read, obviously, because I requested it in my box, but I have heard the best things about it. It takes place in a not so distant future where there are internment camps for Muslims, and it sounds like it's gonna be a really powerful and interesting read. This one is actually currently out, so you can go and get yourself your own copy if you're interested. Then I have The Teeth in the Mist by Dawn Kurtigic, and this is Dawn's newest novel. This is a horror novel. I read her debut novel and I thought it was really interesting, so I'm definitely curious to see how her writing has changed since her debut. I've heard really good things about this one so far, and it's actually blurbed by Juliette Marillier, which is like 
very high praise. And it follows three teenagers centuries apart that are all connected by this same unholy pact. Also in that box is a copy of A Match Made in Mehendi by Nandini Bajpai. And this one I'm really excited about because it's a rom-com and it follows this girl who creates this dating app and her family thinks that she's going to be like the next great matchmaker in her family, but she is not really interested in doing that, but she's just trying to capitalize off of her ability. She ends up uh, matching these two people. One of them is like, I piled a small spell. One of them is the star of the football team and the other one is kind of a wallflower. And it's just all about like exploring groups outside of what you find comfortable and finding new friends in unlikely places. And I think it's gonna be really great. It also came with these very cute bookmarks and two pins. One of them says stay bookish and the other one says booked all weekend. And I also have a little novel water bottle. Then moving on to my next novel box, I have the most recent one, which is the July novel box. This one was curated by Butter My Books on Instagram, so I'll leave a link down below to her account. The novel box is actually different from other subscription boxes because it's not a box that you can subscribe to monthly. It's a box that you can enter to win by signing up for the novel newsletter, and there's a link that I'll leave down below that you can go to every month and enter yourself to win, and you get randomly selected, and someone just gets like a really fun box in the mail without having to pay for anything, which is pretty exciting. So in here we actually have two of my favorite books, The Cruel Prince in paperback, which I don't own, and The Wicked King in hardback, which I do own, but I just love these so much. As you guys know, I am currently hosting Fairyathon along with three of my best friends here on booktube, Alexa from Lux Love Loves Books, Jane from It's Jane Lindsay, and Mel from Mel to the Any. We are reading all of Holly Black's fairy books leading up to the release of The Queen of Nothing, which got pushed up to November and I'm so excited about it. But these ones are going to be our books for October and November. And then we're gonna read Queen of Nothing in November, obviously, right after we finish Wicked King. Just in case you don't know, these are about evil fairies and a human girl whose parents were murdered. Her and her twin sister end up moving into fairy and being raised by a very ruthless man. It's amazing. Also in this box is We Contain Multitudes by Sarah Henstra, and this actually follows a guy who is a huge fan of Walt Whitman as well as the star football player, and the two of them end up getting paired together in this pen pal program, and neither of them are expecting to get much out of it, but it turns out that they have more in common than they were expecting, and they end up forging a really deep connection and falling in love with one another, but they are kind of faced with homophobia and trying to hold on to their relationship. So it sounds like it's gonna be a super powerful read. It's actually compared to books by Jandy Nelson, Nina LaCour, and David Levithan, all of whom have wrote incredibly amazing LGBT romances. So quite excited to get to this one. Then we've got a water bottle in a different color, which is good because I can give Andrew the blue water bottle and I can use the pink water bottle for myself. We've also got some scrunchies, which are amazing because I honestly, ever, like the second that I get home, my hair goes in a scrunchie. So these are very useful to me. We also have these super adorable heart sunglasses. I am so excited to have these. I wanted heart sunglasses that were this shape, like the dramatic heart for a while, but I just hadn't ever ordered myself a pair and now I have one, I'm so happy about it. And I love that the lenses are pink, I'm seeing the world through rose tinted lenses. This is exciting. There's also a Dylan's candy bar lollipop, which I cannot wait to eat. This looks like it's gonna be delicious, as well as a stay bookish and booked all week bookmark. Thank you so much to the novel for sending me this box. I was really excited to get that email and to be able to get one because I've always wanted to receive a novel box, but I have not yet ever won. So this was really, really exciting. I, I really loved everything in it. I kind of wish it was something that you could subscribe to. It's cool that you get to win it. So those are all of the books and novel boxes that I got in June. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in a new one. Bye!